children certainly picked up on very, very quickly. Um, dedication, I don't know, um, except for dedication of buildings or saying like he's terribly dedicated to his work or her work. I'm not sure it's really used very much or very much considered, the idea of being dedicated. I think in that we've lost something very important. Now, we just heard the story of Mar Mary and Joseph presenting Jesus, their firstborn, for a dedication at the Jerusalem temple to fulfill the requirements of the Jewish law. An interesting detail is that they present as their offering two turtle doves. This means, and this is a theme of Luke, this means they were poor. They were not the privileged. Some people called them peasants because well-off folks would offer a lamb. Jesus, the Savior, the Messiah, comes out of what is lowly, what is poor. And then we have the two blessings coming from two prophets, Simeon and Anna. Another uh, note about Luke, he is very much um, uh, recognizing the role of women in Jesus' ministry, and it begins long before this with the Annunciation to Mary, and here Anna takes her place as equal to the prophet Simeon. Now Simeon is thrilled because he perceives that the promise given to him by the Holy Spirit has been fulfilled. He has been able to cast his eyes upon the Savior of Israel, in fact, the Savior of all the nations, the one who would bring consolation and peace to this troubled land. But then Simeon's last words to Mary are rather ominous. He says to Mary, very young, a new mother, and a sword shall pierce your own soul too. Now this is after he had praised Jesus and said, this child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed. And it's after that, he says to Mary, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Haunting, evocative words. These words predict the sufferings that Jesus had to undergo. They also predict for us the sufferings we must undergo when we try, however haltingly, to be dedicated. Dedicated to something larger than us, beyond us. Simeon warns both Mary and us that sometimes to be a faithful follower will be painful. We also hear this in the preaching of the prophet Malachi in our first reading, who was speaking about being refined by fire, our impurities burned away. That is not a painless process. And in my experience, if spiritually based intentions do not accomplish our purification, Simple human experience will do just that. The path to holiness is it easy. I know of a woman, let's call her Susan, who is trying to break into a leadership role in her company. She was performing well, almost universally liked, worked well with her team, the people around her, except for one other person, another woman, who saw her as a rival, saw her as a threat to her own success and advancement. This other person trumped up charges that Susan had short-circuited company policies and arranged false distributions and somehow profited by them. By the time these allegations reached the higher-ups in the company, 
They were scared. They were nervous. They wanted this to just go away, fearing for the company's reputation. They called Susan in and suggested to her that there was an easy way out. If she would only resign, all the charges would be dropped, everything would be clear, and all of this and Susan would just go away. Susan took some time to think about this offer, to pray about what she wanted and needed to do with her professional life. And she decided that she would see this process, however unfair, through to the end. And in the end, the people pressing these trumped up charges backed down. They knew they didn't have the evidence to even bring a case against her, let alone win it. So Susan continued in her position, doing her excellent work. She went on to mentor younger colleagues who were so grateful for her guidance. She wound up advancing in her company, and when a former adversary retired, she was asked to take his place. And from then on, Susan established a model of respectful, collaborative leadership. Here is the reality of Simeon's prophecy, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. But, as the scripture also says, the one who endures to the end shall be saved. When we are consciously dedicated to doing our good work, helping one another along the way, when we are dedicated to following our dreams, roadblocks appear. And when they do, it is so tempting for us simply to give up and to go away and try to forget. But that's precisely the time to keep going, to keep pressing, to keep on working toward what we believe and know is right. This is what it means to be dedicated. This is what it means to be holy, to be whole and holy ourselves the one God created us to be. It's all there in our dedication service, as we talked before with the children. It's all there in our baptism. We reaffirm this every time we renew our own baptismal covenant. If you remember some of those questions, Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. Even if you have not been formally baptized, if you can say yes to these questions, you are committed to what is positive and creative and life-affirming. You count yourself among those who promote love and justice and reconciliation in the world. And so in the words of our biblical tradition, you, like Jesus, are dedicated to the Lord. You are dedicated to reality. You are dedicated to love. But this kind of love and courage is costly. A sword shall pierce your own soul, too. 
power and position and wealth do not appreciate those who promote fairness and rec reconciliation in the world. People of power and wealth expect to dominate. And when they feel challenged, they fight even harder to win. I know that sometimes it appears that despite our best efforts, hurtful and destructive forces always gain the upper hand. But that kind of force and power, taking control over other people, never lasts. What they forget, and what we as followers of Jesus know, is that love is the greatest power of all. The child Mary and Joseph present in the temple would grow up and be crucified on a hill reserved for criminals. Mary would stand weeping at the foot of the cross. But this child's message of transforming love would last and will last because what Jesus preached and lived is reality. So while we observe this feast of Jesus' presentation in the temple, let us present ourselves. Let us dedicate ourselves to lives of holiness, justice, and love.